And hello and welcome everyone to another what should be thrilling installment of Capes and Quests. As always, I am your Dungeon Master, Joel, and joining me are my friends, my compatriots, my D20 degenerates. We got Kurt, we got Aaron, and we got Josh. How are you doing, everybody? Hey, yo. Top of the uh, morning to ye. <laughs> my OCD is sitting in. I'm trying to readjust this camera, but I'm good. I know, I do the same thing. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff actually happened, guys, in the last, uh, in the last installment of, uh, the adventure. You had made it to Treetop, and I thought, you know, instead of doing what I normally do and getting everyone up to speed, I thought it would be fun and interesting if this time, you know, uh, we engaged with you guys. How about you guys tell me what happened last time? Because a lot of shit happened two weeks ago, and we only play this game like every other week. So let's, let's actually see how good my writing is and how much actually penetrates. Uh, so we crashed the wedding. Interesting choice of words. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, all right, so we did de definitely wedding crash. You sure did. Uh, we... Well, we haven't done it yet. I mean, we... We're playing on it. We're, we're mingling in the land, and it's all like the, uh, the few days, the precursor leading mm. up yeah, they... to the wedding that... Yeah, we got on the elevator with the for. pirates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. We, um, we went past the armory... Uh, we definitely. went through the armory and got We some, gave got all of our weapons. weapons away, but Kirk held on to his invisible dagger and snuck something else in. Rogue's got a rogue. He's right here. Uh, we definitely um, visited some of the shops within town, uh, yep. made some connections. Uh, maybe because my character decided to put a knife to someone's neck. <laughs> An invisible dagger? Oh, yeah, we got that's a package how... deal. Yeah. And then, did I pick um... up something to wear for the wedding? Did, did we get outfits? No, that's this. That's this whole episode. Oh yeah, oh, it's, it's it's the shopping <laughs> episode. You got to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. We did a lot of shopping. Uh, I did pick up an awesome scorpion-like dagger uh, weapon. That's you did off the big robot. That was a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. I still haven't used it. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely something to keep in your back pocket. Uh, yeah, you um, were you were still on the trail of the gargoyle, this mystery underworld figure who seems to have their uh, claws in just about everything that you guys have been dealing with uh, since you've been on the run in the tragic mm -hmm. kingdom, and you have reason to believe that they either are uh, one of the co-leaders of the Elven Triad, or at least are controlling uh, one of them, because there were two leaders, a brother and a sister, uh, Orion and uh, Athena, and uh, when th the last battle you were in, you got cornered by a couple Elven Triad thugs on a bridge, and of course, uh, Corbin, <laughs> G G G G Cor Corbin just <laughs> fussed I didn't have my weapons on me. Well, well that... I did shove one of them through the floor. Well, you're a you're a monk now, man, so you don't even need weapons. It's all in the fist. You just couldn't do your elemental stuff. Yeah, you literally pushed one through the bridge, which was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty solid. How you pushed a man through a bridge? Oh yeah, I made I made a bridge underneath that bridge that you guys yep. kept calling a bridge made of dick. <laughs> it was just did. a normal Bro. bridge. <laughs> Yeah, I, I only had one person on my side. I only had one person on my side who saw my bridge. <laughs> Antoine went full Green Lantern. That was also pretty sick. And uh, when you were done that, uh, you were actually met by uh, two women who you had seen before. Uh, they were trying to sell you flowers uh, at the front gate, but they eventually revealed themselves uh, to you that they uh, they were in the Elven Triad too, but seemingly a splinter faction. They were working for the sister, and uh, yeah, that's basically where we join the uh, adventure right now. You're standing across from these two well-dressed Elven women. They're both incredibly tall, almost Amazonian, you would say. Uh, yeah, they claim to work for Athena Taven, one of the co-leaders of the Elven Triad, uh, currently disposed by her brother. And uh, that's uh, that's where we left the adventure. You're just standing there right now. It's night also, I should probably say. Okay. Um, how many more days do we have until the wedding? Uh, the groom comes tomorrow morning, and you're assuming that the wedding will probably be held that night. Okay, so and um, we, we've definitely figured out that the groom, it's a totally... Uh, Prearranged wedding. Oh yeah, Lo total loveless marriage. I think I think you heard the groom's name was uh, Gorp. He's a, he's a grung. He's a frog man. I think you put together oh, that much. Oh yeah, yeah. Gorp the and frog it's, man. And no one has actually like really seen the guy or, or heard much or heard anything really particularly spectacular about this guy. No, no, he's an imperial yeah. silk merchant. Also, thank you, uh, Pat Senior, for the subscription and the donation. Always appreciated. Uh, but so, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he comes tomorrow. Okay. So that's boring. 
<laughs> he's, he's uneventful. Uneventful. Yeah. Uh, do you do you say anything to these two ladies? Because I do believe last time they said uh, we uh, uh the, the uh, good God, what, what are the freaking voices I'm gonna come out with? I swear I give every woman, I give every woman the same airy voice like this. Uh, we we saw what you gentlemen did back there with those two <laughs> triad members. Our, our our mistress Athena would very much like to meet you. We do believe that we have similar enemies in Treetop. Uh, I asked how much for for one of the uh, daffodils. The the are, fl- the flower. Are you guys actually are these for sale or are you guys trying to make money? Look, you can just have them. They were a cover, man, so we could look at all the guests. We don't actually sell flowers. You didn't actually you're, think you're we. Bad, actually you're sell bad flowers. in business, ladies. <laughs> Suckers. I'm gonna <laughs> flip these flowers. Make so much money. They they they. I just remembered I invented a new kind of food. That's right, you did. Yeah, you changed culinary history here. That was another thing that happened last week. It was the mutton, wasn't it? Yeah, the fried mutton. Yeah, it was uh, beer battered mutton. These, <laughs> after hearing that, these two ladies look at you and go, "Ha, huh, you're the creator of the Corbin? You don't say. It's not every day we meet a celebrity who can also kill people via a bridge." I'm not keeping the best low profile. <laughs> not, not really. Look, w- w- walk and talk. We will take you to our mistress, though admittedly, getting there is going to be a little difficult as she is currently a prisoner of her brother in the Hot Rock. Doesn't really sound like much of a leader. Yeah. Well. Oh man, is, it, okay. is this like a prison slash like a uh, place where people from Florida eat when they're out of town, like the Hot Rock Cafe? Because oh. that would be dope. They have oh. pretty good baby back ribs. Oh, you'll see. You'll see what the Hot Rock is, and they kind of lead you to a little oh, side. Oh, right, the Hot Rock. Yes, they. You found out last episode that everything the, is slowly coming back to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that the that the Elven Triad, the way they're able to kind of keep this entire town under their thumb, is that they disappear people to a secret prison called the Hot Rock that's hidden here somewhere. And nobody ever leaves this prison. No one ever leaves this prison. Not not so far anyway. And uh, yeah, they the, these two ladies they uh, lead you uh, down an alley. And, uh, Smash they... cut to title card. The gang leaves the hot rock. <laughs> the gang leaves. <laughs> Basically, this is where we're going. All right, look, we're going to take you to the hot rock now, but it is a prison. We can only promise you that getting you out is going to be easier than getting you in. And they reach into their cloaks and they pull out basically a jar of dirt and a little vial full of fake blood. And they say, look, we're going to need to make this look good. We're going to need to make it look like we captured you. Um, I think I've seen this in a movie before. That's <laughs> kinky. I'm down. Tie me up. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. Uh, what like, does what is the outside of the? So we're approaching the hot rock, right? Uh, you're in an alley right now. You don't know where the hot rock is yet. They're oh, just, okay, okay, okay. They're okay. just trying to dress you up to look the part. <clears throat> so they uh, okay. that they, they take a t- few minutes if there are no uh, <clears throat> no objections from you, and they start making you up and everything. It's a very Hollywood affair. Oh, well, you need to do an undercoat right there first to really really make the darker <laughs> tone shine and everything. And all oh, right, I love I love the blood pacement there. Oh, I know Ivelisse. Yes, I know Diamante. They uh, they got a fun relationship. These two. <laughs> That's a. That's I feel also, like it's the uh, makeup people from Mrs. Doubtfire. It's literally that, and that's also yeah. their name. So, uh, so, so once make, make sure make sure the dirt and grime really get the highlights on my cheekbones. That's yeah. really important. Thank you, you. See, you see, the trick is you start with a little suntan lotion. Is what it is. It really, really lets the grime stick on in there. Oh, that's good. That's good to <laughs> yeah. know. That's a neat little trick. If uh, if we had more time, we'd do some bruise work. But you know, you know, t- ticking clocks and everything. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they dirty you up and everything, and they're like, okay, now you may have to do some acting on this part, but, you know, just just look down and look dejected, all right? Can you can you three do that? Like, the pros that we are, absolutely. Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's my default. Lady, I, I am a sometimes prostitute. <laughs> Beat down and dejected is how I always look. Good, good, good. Yes, we're, we're very supportful of sex workers here in Treetop. Good, good. Well, thank you. This is progressive. <laughs> very much so. So they uh, they lead you off uh, to the far end of town, a place that you haven't really seen yet because it's kind of tucked away there. And you see a large, almost manor-looking building with a sign outside called the Sweet Steam Bathhouse. 
is what this place is. And uh, it's nighttime, so there's no one else around. You're led through the garden area there to a big, big oak wood door. The uh, lady there, Evilly, she knocks uh, kind of in an interesting pattern there, like three short, two long. Clearly, this is some sort of like secret knock that she's mm-hmm. doing. Uh, at that point, uh, a little uh, li- little tight-lipped elf guy there, he's kind of got like a blonde bowl cut. He comes out and he's got a candle in his hand and everything. And, uh, you know, he speaks up and he says, Captured a few more, did you? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, we caught these three skulking around, the Crimson and Clover. We think they may be spies, we're not sure. But, uh, you know, just, uh, just give us the keys and we'll uh, take them down right now. And uh, the little bowl cut guy says, uh, you know, usually I wouldn't do this sort of thing, but we're short-staffed right now. Everyone else is working on Orion's special project or making sure the other gangs don't kill each other. So, all right, he reaches into his pocket, gives uh, the lead woman there a big, uh, big, uh, big ring of keys. And, uh, yeah, they slowly start marching you through the sweet steam bathhouse, which uh, looks pretty nice, you know, marble floors and everything, gold inlays, everything smells like uh, like oils and lotions and everything else. This thing would probably be pretty nice if it didn't also, you know, uh, host a secret prison in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, they're asking for a lawsuit. Marble floors, o- oils and lotions mm. everywhere? Somebody's going to slip, man. Somebody's <laughs> going to slip. Yeah. That's- Oh, man, they're asking for it. (laughs) They have magical anti-slip fields. So, yeah, they lead you down several uh, flights of stairs, which, again, because this is treetop and everything is in big trees, you know, you believe that you're probably deep inside uh, the core of, like, an old oak or something. And eventually you're led into the basement area, which uh, is this large stone room filled with, you know, row after roll of what looked to be almost human-sized cubby holes and in these cubby holes you see uh, all sorts of different people there elves humans what have you and they look very sick and very emaciated and the uh there's a sick tinny smell that fills the air and eventually you start to realize oh these people all uh, are chained up by the leg and all have pipes in their hands as well okay what kind of pipes uh roll roll an investigation for who wants there to we go about cool. this. let me do that that's right, I forgot, D&D. Uh-huh. Ooh, 18. Oh, hot damn. Uh, so these are... Plus, s- plus 19. There yeah. you go. Okay, so you know a lot, Vorlin. These these are smoking pipes, and uh, if you didn't get it, Antoine probably would have got it soon enough. These people are basically being force-fed a uh, narcotic substance called fairy rock. It's basically the elvish version of opium. So these people are being force-fed <laughs> opium and chained up down here so they can't fight and they can't try and escape. Uh, what are our roll to stay? <laughs> to stay in <laughs> to the opium den. To, to I abandon my party We're gonna have some stay. Problems. I mean, you can just <laughs> grab some fairy rock. These people are very weak. You can just steal one of their pipes. Uh, I steal several of their pipes. <laughs> oh, no. You do that. This is going to become like Kevin in the Woods, where <laughs> the drugs don't work on that guy because he's already too high. <laughs> D- 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 Diamante kind of looks at you. She's the lady who's pulling up the rear of the darker-headed woman, and she uh, she looks to you, Corbin, and Vorlin, and is like, is, is, is he like this all the time? We're kind of like whatever we want to be, depending on what the scene is. Yeah. No, sometimes I'm in the uppers. I'm not always like this. So, like, not always opium. You you know, most people are horrified by what goes on here, but not not you three, I guess. I guess we really backed some winners on this one then. All right. <laughs> I've been to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that in the Empire, this Cleveland? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Through the mountains of Ohio. Ah, you must tell us more <laughs> of this. So, uh, so they lead you... Uh, through the corridors here, uh, you see maybe one or two guys doing a very poor job keeping watch, but by and large, you get the distinct feeling that there's a skeleton crew here watching now, what with the whole wedding going on, and eventually, you're led uh, in the back to a big, big fancy door there, uh, fancier than the one at the front, I just realized I used fancy door twice, and uh, they uh, they open up showing a bit of familiarity and walk on in, and this this is definitely a prison cell, too, but it's much nicer made up than all the other places. There's a lot of amenities, a lot of, uh, what is it, symbols of hominess. There's a four-post bed there with silk curtains, a big, big, like, uh, mirror, like something you would see in a, in a wealthy uh, lord or lady's uh, house. And uh, in the corner, 
in basically a white uh, dressing gown, you see a fairly petite looking elven woman and she's uh, adjusting her makeup and in the foreground too you also see an elaborate wedding dress as well the uh, the hannibal lecter suite i like it it's absolutely yeah. a Hannibal lecter suite yeah right. no super fancy yeah the uh the lady in question who you can only assume is athena taven uh turns around and uh she you know dismisses uh her two henchwomen there basically to go watch the door and uh it takes her a little bit of looking but eventually her eyes dart to you vorlin of all people and she kind of stands up there and she says vorlin I, 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 actually no she was supposed to be french actually god damn it retcon i'm redoing her voice. it's okay uh, fix it in post. There you fix it in post. <laughs> this is this is why we had it. V- v- Volan, is that is that you? I did not ever think I would see you again, especially not under these circumstances. Uh, and this is awkward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I nudge Vorlin, be lo- and I, and I do I do this, <laughs> <laughs> but, but as a question. <laughs> <laughs> So you're shrugging while you do it? <laughs> Slight head tilt. I take uh, it you did not tell them about us, did you? No, no one knows about us. Of course I've been not. drinking to forget about it. <sighs> sit down, sit down. I will put on the tea. I imagine we have much to talk about. So, uh, so when she... are your kids yeah, going to come out the back this room? Is, yeah, this is Vorlin trying to I not make an eye contact with anybody. I am very easily still staring at the floor and looking disheveled, but not because now I'm I'm faking it. <laughs> so so she starts pouring tea for everyone and also starts spilling the tea on Vorlin. And you know your friend and me, we had a wonderful month here when he was lying low after you killed General Dijak back in Oasis. But uh, then I found out that he had rich imperial parents himself, and he ran out. But perhaps it was good, because if he stayed, my brother would almost certainly have killed him. That's right, guys. I'm rich. (laughs) I thought we already knew that. (laughs) You did, but you didn't make a big deal about it. (laughs) I'm just a jerk, and I like to rub it in everyone's face. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not new. This is new. The fact that he's had <laughs> sexual intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't even have to roll for it. Yeah, you right? didn't have to roll for it. The things I've had to do to myself to get some in this world. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the worst type of sex history. It's just canon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I imagine you have uh, many questions for me, no? I'm sure that you did not come here to reunite out of the goodness of your heart. Uh, Athena, how'd you get here? It was my brother, Horion. It happened a few weeks after you left. A mysterious note came directed to the triad from someone calling themselves the Gargoyle. Um, I would like you to say Orion's name one more time for me, please. Horion. (laughs) Orion? Okay. Just making sure. (laughs) Yes, this uh, this mystery figure was trying to build some manner of coalition between all the different gangs in the tragic kingdom to uh, hurt the Balas and to uh, conquer High Moor. And I, of course, wanted no part of it because he was a scaly imperial fuck as she looks directly into your eyes, Morlin. <laughs> I may be a gangster, I may have built this prison, but goddammit, I am a patriot. <laughs> My brother, and, uh, though, he felt differently. He wanted more gold and a chance to lead. Uh, yeah, so I don't have the best taste in, in women. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> or anything. <laughs> or in anything, yeah. I don't know, man. I like her. She seems like she has a bubbly personality and she'd be good at parties. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you've seen the beanbag back at the party barge. My taste is crap. <laughs> And now I am uh, a prisoner here in the place that I built and I designed to be married off to some goddamn frogman tomorrow. French lady getting married to a frogman. There's some joke in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> I am La <laughs> Sad. <laughs> I, Athena, what? Obviously, you're not agreeing to this, but are you? Do you really want to go through with this? Not at all. My forces were decimated. My brother, he paid them. He threatened them. I only have Ivelisse and Diamanta now to work for me. And even then, they have to be very, very careful to not get caught. 
Uh, I just, I, anyways, <laughs> what, how, how can we help you? Well, there are a number of things you could do. You could deal with my husband-to-be gop who comes in tomorrow, or you could also deal with my brother. Obviously, I don't expect you to do this out of the kindness of your heart, but I assure you, if you go and deal with my brother, you will find out the true identity of the gargoyle. Uh, All right, so I look back over the rest of our party really quickly, and I just really need to let, you know, Corbin and Antoine know that they owe nothing to my really bad sexual choices <laughs> in my sexual history. And that we have a mission and whatever friendship that we have. And then I can't stop laughing because I know none of this is real. <laughs> Couldn't even get through it. Uh, how much gold are we going to do this for? That's the title of this episode. Everything that he just said. <laughs> Put that on the YouTube banner. <laughs> How did I know it always comes back to gold? Look, when my brother took over the gang, he also took my safe. It has a spell lock and only I know the word for it. The word is pomegranate. If you open it, last time I checked, there was 500 gold in it, some magical weapons. I'm sure that will more than cover your labor. Why did you use our safe word as the magical word? <laughs> because I am, how you say, a nostalgic. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> And that's me saying it. <laughs> don't bring pomegranates into the bedroom. People in the chat, don't fuck with pomegranates. Literally, don't fuck with pomegranates. From what I understand, my brother Orion has not been in the city in weeks now in the lead up to the wedding. He is finishing plans on his dream project. Oh, uh, what's the dream project? A fucking zoo for monsters. Can you believe that? He wanted to build a fucking zoo. Every day he said, Asina, I want to be the very best like no one ever was. I will catch all the monsters and I will have a zoo for them that people can come and see. That's so, yes. I, got, well, I was kind of hoping it was a giant robot. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, yeah. No, this guy just wants to catch them all is basically what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, if you want uh, giant robots, you need to talk to Dex. That was his side hustle. My stupid <laughs> brother is not aware that his right-hand man is screwing him over and cutting his own deal with the Imperials, but I do. All right. Um, where, Athena, where, where is this, this chest that we need to go infiltrate? It is so we need to get the spell. It is in his office, which is in his makeshift zoo, which is somewhere on the forest floor. I have never seen it myself, but I know it is out there somewhere. It is a big man-made building. You will probably not be able to miss it. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the zoo, because I, I want to <laughs> give our homie back on the party barge a pet lemur, because I feel like that would just complete his look, his overall profile of a person. Yeah, I'm not entirely opposed to this. <laughs> it's uh, it's at this point too. Uh, Athena looks at you and sees how cut up some of you are from that fight on uh, the bridge. Some of you actually did take crit hit. All right, I tell you what, stay here tonight, get your rest, and here she throws you a key. That is my own key that I cut from the lockers where they keep your weapons. This is weird because this is exactly how the second date went too. So. <laughs> Well, I'll smoke a bunch of opium. I just kind of pass out where I am. <laughs> well, I guess he is staying the night. He's standing up like a dead samurai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At first light tomorrow, I will tell you how you actually exfiltrate this building. And oh, you're, you're going to love this. All right. Well, pa pass it on over to your bang buddy, and he'll give me the info in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Zutelo, what am I getting myself into? People don't forget, Vorla. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so uh, if no one else wants to do anything, you spend a very, very awkward night in this prison within a prison <laughs> within a bathhouse. Awkward for one person. Yeah, I mean, the rest of you are kind of loving it. Uh, yeah, I mean, for us, it's just the prison thing that's kind of a downer. He has layers yeah. to his awkwardness. Any, uh, any this interesting... Is this is his side story, for real. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everybody gets one. Uh, any uh, any interesting dreams tonight, everyone, or do you all just sleep soundly? Uh, can I have prophetic dreams? Is that a thing I can get, like foreshadowing a couple moves? Apparently. Uh, yeah, that's something you do. Usually when you take drugs, it's you, uh, you do indeed take. Uh, you have prophetic dreams. And yes, once again, you sleep, and you hear the familiar voice in your head that you've never quite been able to name before. But, you know, you've heard it 
all your life and uh, you see flashes of something in the deep woods, a, uh, a building, a structure, uh, what is it, with, uh, with big, big leaves and reeds on top, like they're trying to hide it from uh, people flying overhead. But yeah, you definitely see something out there that uh, you believe could probably further your quest somehow. Oh, sweet. The voice in my head was a morning radio DJ, so it was fun. <laughs> hey, Antoine. <laughs> hey, everybody. Today we're going to be checking out this crazy building somewhere in the forest. Hell, oh, yeah. beware the danger that lies ahead, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that giant spider's wall? Flush. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Robin, so how many times have you met a giant spider? Come on, Robin, you tell me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you uh, you wake up the next morning there. Uh, what is it? Uh, food is being brought uh, for you by uh, Ivelisse and Diamante. Uh, you know, elven breads, that sort of thing. Uh, they hand it out to you, and uh, slowly but surely they start going over the plan. Uh, for how you're actually going to escape this prison now that it's morning time and that there's more people around. Uh, Ivelisse, she uh, she pulls a hair off her head and a hair off Diamante. She takes out a little vial and says, uh, this right here is potion of shape changing. I'm going to give you all a sip of this. We have some of my hair, some of Diamante's hair, and also a hair from one of the guys you killed last night. You're going to take this, you're going to drink the potion, and for an hour, you are going to be able to assume their shape and leave completely free, so long as nothing goes wrong, and uh, we will leave soon afterwards. All right, something's going to go wrong. Yeah, it's, totally. They, would, they wouldn't have you said that. You literally just said it. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody, nobody was just said that without planning on something going wrong. Uh, I'm a very glass-half-empty person, all right? I really wanted to try to idiocracy my way out of here and just tell the guard that I was supposed to be getting out. I've already been in prison. I was supposed to be getting out today. I'm with that plan. <laughs> drink drink your goddamn potion, guys, is what they say, and hand it to you. And uh, the question is now, who who wants to become who? Who wants to become us, and who wants to become one of the dead guards? I'll be a dead guard. All right, there you go. Seems like minimal effort on my part. His name was Paulo, in case you're wondering. I don't need... I'm dead. <laughs> I don't need to know. The, the, they don't know he's dead. You threw them off the side, which is a good job of cleaning up the corpses. Oh, man, I thought you guys were going to take me out as a dead body. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you're, you're walking out under your Just own weekend power. weekend at Bernie's, you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that leaves Vorlin and Corbin to be uh, Ivelisse and uh, Diamante. So uh, you drink your potions then? Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. there we All go. Right. So in seconds, the change starts to happen, and it's totally straight up the fucking Paula Juice potion scene from Harry Potter. That's what I'm ripping off. Oh, nice. totally. It's... I'm just hoping that, like, I get to wear, like, the nice frilly dress, and it's nice and airy, and I have, like, a, you know, a fine appreciation for it because I'm always being bogged down with my rogue armor. Oh, yeah, so. they, they give you a change yeah. of clothes, too. too much about you. I feel like we're learning too much about you in a short amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> you realize my character doesn't wear a shirt, so we're kind of in trouble right now. Mm. Well, that's uh, oh yeah, that's right. But he wears everybody else. <laughs> well, <laughs> that he does. Well, that's why they uh, they push some clothes on you quickly. Here, here, put this on, damn it! I will not have you besmirching my good name. All right, but now I'm not getting that armor boost. <laughs> well, just just don't start nothing. Also, you're a monk, so you don't wear armor anyway. That's so. what I'm saying. I get that boost from not having the armor on. <laughs> clothes don't count as they armor. They gave me a shirt. Oh, okay. Clothes are okay. just clothes. We're learning so much about D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so should we start heading out just like really fast walking out of here with no talking to anybody or looking at anything or touching anything? Should we just get out of prison? Just walk casually. All but, right. You know, don't look like you're walking casually. Mm. We walk casually, but in unison with our hands in our pockets. There basically. you go. <laughs> I will <laughs> walk the way I always walk, and I am not changing anything about me. Just barreling. <laughs> so you are now a big, independent elven woman just barreling through the halls of this prison. You know, all around you, people are like, Ugh. You know, people are giving them their morning smack and everything to keep them docile. And eventually you retrace your steps, climb the series of stairs that were in front of you, and you find yourself in the main hall of this bathhouse, which is actually quite busy and quite bustling today. It seems like uh, some of the other gangs, the Black Boar Riders, uh, the Gold City Syndicate, it seems like they've uh, actually come in here for the day and they've got wine and cheese and they're in their towels and they're rabble rousing and they're doing, doing a lot of towel snapping and everything as you make your way through the bathhouse 
Well, I didn't know there was going to be like some wine and cheese shit going on. We <laughs> might, fellas, we might have to stay for this. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what kind of cheeses? We talking like them fancy ass cheeses? Uh, some kind of elven monster cheese that you've never oh, seen before. Oh, shit. Monster cheese. Not bad. <laughs> like, got... monster or monster cheese? Like, yeah. monster? Mm, they got a... You don't know what it is. They got a lot of little toothpicks in it at the front. I don't know. In a fantasy world, I'm really scared of what they're using in order to, like, grow the cheese. You, I, might, I might grab a couple on our way out, though. You, you yeah. have you, a napkin. In truth, you've seen no livestock here, <laughs> no horses, and people fly around on, like, big moss and butterflies to get to, like, the next level of yeah, the city. Yeah, this is coming from, like, it's like... I, I've had vegan stuff. cheese before. It's fine. <laughs> it's, mm. it's like the stuff in between, like, orc's toes or something. I'm convinced. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to take I'm, a chance. I'm just put a couple in a napkin. I'm put so, a couple in a napkin. <laughs> there you go. So, so you get your cheese, yeah. you see the other gangs uh, acting like total goobers, and uh, you make your way... Uh, to the front door when uh, who should stride in but a fellow dressed in the same kind of green and silver garb that you know is the traditional uniform of the elven triad only this guy is wearing a lot more armor it's got kind of like an insectoid theme going on it and uh, he stops you specifically Antoine and says Paulo Paulo where the hell were you last night Paulo you're supposed to check in with me oh that nudging Paulo Oh, what? Oh, man. Uh, I'm Paulo. Yes, is yes, what you I are. say to him. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. I got wrapped up uh, reading a scroll of Desperate Housewives. Uh, I can't have you and Ringo slacking today with the wedding coming. I need you down at the Crimson and Clover, making sure those other gangs don't start any shit. You're, you're right. You're right. I'm going to get right over there. And hey, man, look, I know I've been dropping the ball lately. Things have been complicated at home, but you're going to see a new me today. Well, I'm turning it around. Good, good. That's what I want to hear. Uh, he actually sneers a little at uh, you two, uh, Vorlin and Corbin, in your disguises. And you two, how about you make yourself useful? I think the blacksmith has been talking to out-of-towners. I want you to take how care of him. you eat me? <laughs> oh. hey, hey 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 you you watch your mouth prisoner of mine who's like a prisoner no nah, right? no nah. he's a he, he's a gangster too you're all in the same game just a lady gangster <laughs> right. so literally yeah. everyone in this franchise is a gangster it really is <laughs> yeah oh just now you know. you you are lucky evilise and you will watch your tongue or so help me i will tell orion on you she's evilise Oh, I mix you up sometimes. That's that's my bad, you what, know. What I'm is just that? A, a lot why of does that reflect? Hold on, don't. Yeah, you need to go back and reflect on. We don't all look the same. Look, I'm that's just not. This is. How about I tell Orion that you think all elves look the same? Let's have that conversation. But, but I'm an elf that? too. Look, look, I'm under a lot of stress right now. I've got a lot of pokers and a lot of fires. Look, just go, just go deal with the blacksmith. I think he's talking to people again. We've given him lots of chances. I want his ass down here and slung in irons. All right, we're on it. And he, also, I think he likes to just be called Smith now. Mm. All right, let mm. us go to the blacksmith. Right. We're all in agreement that guy's a bigot, right? <laughs> yeah. He's the town bigot. You say. I've never been so offended to be an elf before. <laughs> I mean, he was an elf, too. He was just, I think he was more sexist than racist. Yeah, I think this reflects really badly on the entire race. And, you know, as a dragonborn, I'm going to stuff this in the back of my head for later. Oh, man. I just love that I, d immediate decision to label one of his characters a bigot. <laughs> That's fun. And it's camp. It's <laughs> it's internalized is what it is. <laughs> I mean, he, he did seem like to be a bad guy, but there you go. So uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you walk your way through the streets of uh, Treetop here. It's a brand new day. People are bustling all over the place. Uh, you pass a couple shops that you hadn't gone in before that you had heard about. There's a bunch of, like, uh, guys in pointy wizard hats hanging out around side what looks to be some sort of caravan. You you vaguely remember there being talk of a magic bookmobile somewhere in this town where spellcasters go to actually get refilled on supplies, which is, you know, hard to do because, you know, ever since the Arcane Academy blew up, no one can really do that. You also uh, walk by the Oasis Cafe, which you heard was quite popular and quite booming now as people enjoy this new hot brown drink that's just taken the elven communities by storm. Um, do, do we still look like elves? Uh, right now you do, yeah. How do I flirt with somebody to get them to buy me this new brown stuff? 
I mean, you can uh, you can try. Roll. Uh, th there's a big long line there. I would say either roll a persuasion or uh, yeah, roll a persuasion. Yeah, I just I gotta try it while I can, right? What coffee? What's it? Yeah. Look, I got the goods. Let's try to make this happen. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, what's the point? Fifteen plus of four is is nineteen. So I kind of want to sashay up past the line to uh, the the orc coffee brewista clerk person. Uh, and uh, being a beautiful woman, everyone just lets you do this. And also being a gangster in the Elven Triad, everyone double lets you do it because they're afraid of you and getting locked up in a secret prison. I feel so free. It um, feels like I, this happens just, a lot. I make a bluster, and I just, like, hey, by the way, I've been waiting forever for my drink. It was a, a DM, please, fill in the blanks <laughs> on what kind of drink I had. So uh, so you do that, and uh, right. the uh, the person working the counter actually turns around, and uh, surprise, surprise, you actually know the two people who run the Oasis Cafe. Do they still recognize me? Uh, no, because you're still, uh, what is it, as one of the uh, women right. henchmen there. But the two people running this... It's Nolan Liam, the elfin dwarf brother from Oasis in season one. They are now oh, running this gonna, coffee shop. Did you bang these guys too? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, 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 What's it to you? It's still early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel like Miss. This um, whole town's just gonna be full of his conquests. <laughs> I'm real sorry about your weight, Miss. Please, please, here, just, uh, here, just take this right now. And uh, he even, uh, he even puts a little extra change on top. Of it. Here, you know, that's right there. And you know, you, uh, you, you, you tell Mr. Taven and the and, and his sister that you know we, we, we're really happy that you gave us a place here to, to, to work and ply our craft, especially after we went down in a in the original Oasis. We're just, you know, we're just happy to be able to earn. They're gonna break up again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. So yeah, you uh, you get coffee and you get like f a five gold of change. Yeah, well, no, no problem. I'm I am satisfied. Thank you so much. And uh, <sighs> after all, I, I will be back. <coughs> you uh, you hear Liam there, who was the guy who sold you Fey Dust, originally Antoine. He's kind of up on a ladder now, grabbing a bunch of different beans, and he looks down at his brother. He's like, God damn it, if you keep giving extra change, this is never going to work, man. God, I miss selling Fey Dust. Yeah, I miss you selling Fey Dust too, bro. Wait, what? You a legend mm -hmm. in these streets. Oh, finally some respect. About goddamn time. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's your little exchange there, and that's my little season one callback. There you go. Uh, also, I, I asked our... them, I asked them a parting question, like whose idea was this coffee shop? I don't stick around for an answer because I know it's gonna tear them apart. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you see, it's it's a long story actually. It's back when we let, and then they just the story trails off as you leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that story will be a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> also very excited to uh, know that we actually have another fade us hook up somewhere in the land there you go i mean he's yeah. dry right now he's selling coffee <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true like, when this fails like most businesses do in their first year of opening he will be back <laughs> to drug dealing and i'll be there <laughs> I, I mean business seems to be booming right now the only problem seems to be is that elvin triad guys keep coming in and extorting them for money <laughs> Yeah, no, see, look, that's not a sustainable business model. <laughs> that's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you, uh, you make your way back, uh, basically, to the entrance to the big, uh, what is it, big wooden elevator, and uh, as you walk, time carries on, and slowly but surely, the effects of your polymorphing potion start to wear off, and you slowly but surely start turning back into your original selves. Okay. No, so, I don't want to go back to being me. <laughs> Learning a lot about Antoine this week. Who's <laughs> was so happy to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. <laughs> I just liked getting free stuff and being appreciated. Absolutely. <laughs> just admire it even. It was nice. Don't we all? Nice. Yeah. You uh you hear a commotion overhead or uh, yeah overhead in yonder and uh, there seems to be a whole big not like a parade but like a very tiny procession of frogmen coming on in and they are just acting like the emo most obnoxious bachelorette party ever yeah my friend's getting married nah it's his special day nah. and they're like waving a flag and the flag says uh gorp on it <laughs> just a gorp flag okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, so I wonder who it could be. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, could be anyone. 
biggest mystery um, of the season. Is is it is it an armed procession, procession or is it just like his froggy groom men? It's his froggy groom men. Yeah, these these guys do not look like fighters in the slightest. They're Good going to know. that. They're going to that bar, right? Uh, yeah, they seem to be walking in the general direction of the Crimson and Clover. And seeing as he's getting married tonight, it looks like they're having like a walking bachelor party. Yo, let's infiltrate, blend in, turn up, do the deed. <laughs> are we still going to head for the zoo at any point, or are we just going to... I was about to say, what the fuck are we even doing? Wasn't there a zoo at some point in this? <laughs> oh, yeah, the zoo. I what need plot my point are we on now? Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, we stopped for coffee, that's Look, right. Look, it's fine when you guys go on side quests. Something else <laughs> more, heart. more like it's AD&D. Like, what's going on? Right. <laughs> AD&D. That's what we should have called it. Screw capes and quests. This should have been that's AD&D. That's actually a really good nerve. That's a really that's, good uh, That's pretty good. If, if that's not already taken, like, Jesus fucking Christ, is pretty good. But, uh, yeah, you, you basically have two options now. You can go... And do something with the groom if you want. That's one way to stop the wedding. But if you want to further the greater quest of figuring out uh, who the gargoyle is and actually getting paid, uh, what is it? The zoo is also an option. Guys, I'm sure we want to get paid. Yeah, let's go zoo. I what mean, reason do we even have for stopping the wedding? I mean, well, effing up frogmen is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to try frog legs. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, let's, let's 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 head to the zoo. Yeah, zoo trip. All right. Now, uh, don't forget, too, you also got... Well, actually, no, if you're leaving, the dude just gives you your weapons back. Oh, oh thank good. goodness. All, All right. right, cool. Do we have, like, a ticket stub we give him? Yeah, How does yeah. he know what's ours? It's like coat check. Then yeah. again, too, okay. y you guys are kind of hard to miss. He remembers you three. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Corbin's weapons, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Mr. Catman, here you go. We got a big scary mace for you, uh, a crossbow what does shoot the fire, and uh, oh, and, and oh you, Mr. Burly Mountain Man, uh, we got two crazy gloves that uh, look like they were made in my nightmares, uh, one what shoots the acid and one what shoots the fire. I have a feeling there's a story behind how he knows they do those things, and he's not going to tell it because... It's kind of embarrassing. I think, oh. it, I think it's related to his nightmares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. oh, we totally take all the weapons for a ride, you know, when we have them in the locker. I mean, just like every valet is driving your car, we're totally trying out your weapons. He's, he's killed a friend of his, a co-worker, and now he's racked with guilt because he used the acid gloves. <laughs> nah, nah, Dave's not dead. He's just horribly burnt and will never have children again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You should thank me. Yeah. <laughs> you should. All Enjoy right. Enjoy that free time, buddy. So uh, yeah, you get your weapons back, and I take you make your uh, long trek down uh, the wooden elevator. Yes, the long wooden elevator. All right, you uh, make it to the elevator there, and it's like a loading screen from Mass Effect. What what do you do to pass the time in this elevator? Uh, drugs. Uh, it's just <laughs> awkward. I don't want to talk about it. They now know too much about me. There's no, there's no cool rogue exterior anymore. No, everyone, it's gone. Everyone knows you're I a big softy. I take a drag of whatever drugs I have on me. And I'm like, hey, remember that that gross, gross person you slept with back there? What was that all about? That was crazy, right? And that's and that's just me putting the fingers to my chest, going, Gro me, gross person. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, gross person. We've gotten this far, and the things you've done. Have gotten us this far. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say his gross stuff served a point. Yeah, I just progress the plot. Just usually, just fumble around and get wrapped up in like tar and attract. I'm just up. confused at your gross stuff. <laughs> I mean, now there's a zoo. A private game. Is the zoo connected to the wedding? <laughs> Uh, I mean, th that's oh, what the brother was the doing. Zoo. He's marrying off the sister, so he has more time to build his private zoo. Makes sense. The, yeah, you need hobbies. The, uh, the, the general feeling you got is that Athena was the brains of this operation, the brother was the muscle, but the gargoyle is just promising him more money and authority so he could, you know, follow his passion project. Okay. Well, that seems All like right. the brains to me. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Let's take care. Let's take care of this problem so Vorla can be with the woman he loves. Ooh, no, no yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah no, fix it. No, we're doing this for love, fellas. <laughs> no, we're not. We're the gold. 
the gold. <laughs> yeah, love is gold. You're right, buddy. Uh, all right, let's head to the zoo. The greatest treasure of all. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, before you Corbin all... is asexual, so he doesn't really understand any of this, but it's <laughs> that you've accepted whatever you are. Uh, now, uh, now, before you three hit the ground, everyone roll me a constitution. Uh, all right. Uh, four. Twenty. Wait, hold on. Do I have a thing to add to that? I'm just to... Oh, six. Okay. And I'm looking for my constitution. Oh, what is my constitution? Oh, oh, plus four. So twenty-four. Oh, hot damn! Damn. You're the most. Hold on one second. I keep resizing my character sheet. Antoine's a fucking it. tank. No, oh, it's the hell is constitution. Yeah, so I just got a fourteen. Okay. The foundation of our nation. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Well, not <laughs> mine. We have a charter of rights and freedoms. It's a whole thing. <laughs> Oh man, you guys should shorten that down to like a single word, like you know, constitution. Yeah, it's not a. Yeah, it's not, it's not as punchy. I don't know. There seems to be working out better than ours at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Tish. So, all right. So, Corbin, you rolled the lowest on the constitution check, and that means you know, with like three minutes left before you eventually hit the ground, uh, you let out a fart, and you know, it's just really awkward in this place. You didn't have uh, the I constitution just... to hold it in. That's in character. A thousand. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think he's phased by it. Doesn't even <laughs> wince at it. Mm -mm. Doesn't even shrug. It's just like breathing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just uh, just a big old fart. So uh, yeah, you uh, after that other awkward moment on top of the several other awkward moments that brought you to this situation, you eventually do make it to the ground into the wood elf tent city that uh, you had been in previously. Okay. I'd like to point out Joel literally stopped the whole campaign just to see which of us would fart. Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> like, there was no like there's no call for constitution. He was just like, all right, and here in the plot is where I wrote down fart. <laughs> That's so, uh it, there, he has in his script fart. <laughs> That's fart my style. In here. We, we all have our fighting styles. This is mine. <laughs> or or he's got five pages of how he's gonna recall back to this moment in season three. So it could go either way. Very important to character. This develop. is literally after like Weeks and weeks of us messing with Joel. This was his from hell's heart. I stab at thee moment. <laughs> oh, you'll know when I stab at thee. You'll know. <laughs> All right. So uh, in this moment, your character farts. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys know what you're looking for, but you don't really know what direction to head in. But uh, you are in kind of a, a tent city right now with a bunch of wood elves. So what? Uh, what do you do? Okay. Um. Did we explore the city yet, this part? You walked through it, but you didn't really talk to anybody. All you know is that, uh, what is it, the uh, the Buck Brothers, two of the guys who were part of the Balor gang, they said they oh. had family here and that this is like where they send their money and seeing as that they live in a tent city, now you know why they were sending money back here. Right, those rad dudes that we met back at the bar mm -hmm. like several episodes ago. Okay. Um, well, shoot, um, is there, uh, let's, let's kind of... Go from tent I, to tent? Yeah, I just let's just kind of get a lay of the land. Should I roll like? Uh, you can roll a perception or an perception, investigation. Perception, yeah. Let's kind of kind of figure this out. Wow. Okay. Cool. One plus two is three. Uh, you see people walking around, and they're kind of giving you the stink eye because you just came from the big city up top. I, I got an to uh, Corbin and say it was him. Oh, hot damn. Well, Corbin sees so much. Yeah, you see people running around doing their daily business, tanning skins and everything from the giant monsters that uh, live in the forest. Uh, you see, uh, what is it, kind of what looks to be a bigger tent than the others. You probably assume if these guys have a leader or chief, they probably live here. Should we ask them which way we're going? Are, are we the guys that actually stop for directions? <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, everybody here just looks intense. Like, looks like they're intense. All right, so <laughs> let's go to this big. Let's go to this big tent. All right, there's uh there's two okay. guard there's two guards standing outside there, and uh, they kind of cock their bows in your general direction. They're like, "Hey, hey, not just anyone can come in. Do you do you have business with the chief?" Uh. Has he heard the good word? We're people of About nature here. About the bird. <laughs> oh. <laughs> birds, you say? Is there something wrong with the birds? We actually take birds very seriously here. They are our guardian spirit. S serious enough to let... Yeah, no, they're all in danger. 
Oh They're shit! All in danger, and we have to speak to him like right now. Oh the shit! Birds. Well, in that case, you better come right on in then. All right, idiots. Yeah. Wait, what was that? <laughs> what did they say? Uh, holy, I said, all right. <laughs> holy crap! Bird really was the word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you walk on in there and you see uh, in this kind of elaborate long tent there uh, an older wood elf gentleman in a very elaborate uh, headdress there, a lot of hunting trophies, a lot of monsters that this guy has seemingly defeated. And actually, this dude looks kind of familiar in a way. He actually looks like an older version of the Buck Brothers who were kind of twins anyway. Okay, um, shoot, should I? I I'm going to go up there and I kind of want to... Uh, I'm gonna ask him. Like, I'm just gonna try to uh, see if he uh, remembers the Buck Brothers. Mm. All right. So, uh, yeah. What, what do you say to him? I, uh, it's like, uh, excuse me, good sir. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be related or, or know the the Buck Brothers, would you? Uh, Matthias and Nicodemus. Yes, they, uh, they are my sons. I, I, I then I, I flex for him. Like, it <laughs> would be them. huge disappointments to you. <laughs> Uh, we we all walk different paths, you know. They're good boys, but they were never going to make it here in these parts. They send back what money they can. I can't say as a father I truly respect what they do, but, you know, I I lived a rambunctious use my, myself, but mostly that was just adventuring and slaying dragons and everything, you know. These these kids today with their criminal syndicates. I mean, yeah. I you mean, are you, immensely you, more understanding than I expected. You live in a tent city, dog. Comes, like, comes with looking it. Down on them. They got paper. Hey, I live in this tent city because, you know, we disagree with how things are run up top. Again, also controlled by gangsters, but gangsters with no morals. Oh, fine. <laughs> Checkmate. Checkmate tent, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you boys with anything? Uh, um, yes, we need to yeah. know if you would like real, free, and high-quality service to increase your viewers. <laughs> and Oh, man. Would I ever... <laughs> oh boy, howdy! You guys must have came from heaven. We yeah. we uh, we have for a for everybody on YouTube. <laughs> that's what an inside joke for us. Yeah, mm, for us streamers. <laughs> you know, every night I do seances. I try and talk with the nature spirits out here, and you know, I just I just wish more people would come and more people would see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a thing when I'm out here streaming with the spirits. <laughs> Drop an elf in the sky. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing, I tell you. Uh, so, um, okay, so we're going. All right, to, yeah, uh, back to this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we're we're looking for maybe it's it's a zoo of some sort, some sort of like habitat. You wouldn't know of that around here, would you? What is a zoo? We do not have a word for that in our culture. What the hell is a zoo? An animal exhibit? You mean, yeah. I mean, we don't really have any animals around here that aren't monsters. Do you mean someone is actually stupid enough or crazy enough to try and exhibit these killer creatures? And again, he shows you all of his hunting trophies, you know, uh, giant drakes and spiders and everything else that he's killed in his adventuring career. Yeah, we're looking for a real Dr. Hammond type, if you... If you yeah. Say. Hmm. Maybe something set up by an engine. <laughs> Does this have anything to do with the Tavens? Yes. Yes. Motherfuckers. They're always, always causing trouble. Even when they were kids, they were little fucking hellraisers. You know why they're called the Elven Triad, right? Because there's three of them and they're Elven? They're, yeah, I'm saying because they're a triad of elves? There used to be three of them. You ever wonder what happened to Artie, the third guy? I am now. No, but you're going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Flashback. I'm sure you've heard the raunchy joke in the taverns and in the back alleys about how Athena and Orion are closer than any two siblings should be. Am I right? Yes. Ew. I remember well, hearing something about It's that. awkward. Well, it's actually a cover story, you see. Orion, gay. Always been gay. He got caught one day with his lover, who was the third member of the triad, and instead of owning up to it, killed the guy. This thing is incredibly fucked up. Yeah, oh, just yeah. be who you are, buddy. He's a son of a bitch. <laughs> 
how did our freaking terrible group of degenerates become the most progressive characters in this game? Yeah, no, because we've also because we've always been socially progressive <laughs> for real, <laughs> and we've murdered a lot of the population of this world. Also that. <laughs> And so he created that story himself. He'd rather have people think he was a sister fucker than gay. Old move, Cotton. <laughs> see if it pays off. <laughs> I see you have that in your culture too, Catman. <laughs> the great prophet Cotton. Yeah. Oh my god. What a, what a weird choice. He has like no friends to double check that choice for him. I'd rather people think I'm begging my sister than somebody not related to me and of the same gender. Uh, look, I hope everyone at home is just as excited for us to kill this character <laughs> as we are. So <laughs> This is how you create villains. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I tell you what, uh, some of my scouts have been telling me about uh, strange shipments in the night. Caravans heading out into the deep woods where no one ever goes. I assumed it was drugs or weapons or something, but maybe it's related to your zoo. Yes. Always the goddamn deep woods. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to find this deep woods zoo. <laughs> and we're going to free the animals. And then we're going to feed him two set animals. <laughs> then we're going to take them all back to the party barge. And we're going to turn that in the zoo oh, of Superman the Animated Series. Oh, okay? Yes. That's fucking dope. How did I not think of that? That's amazing. I That's love that awesome. we just discovered that Corbin has a soft spot for the animals. Yeah. We yeah. just discovered that a long time ago. Remember when I freed the horses and I got that oh, thing right. that I still haven't used? Okay, see, I, I I'm, found I'm it was more of a frustration of deep woods more than a love for animals. <laughs> yeah, I just thought you guys I came like... from the mountains. I like things high. No <laughs> offense, Antoine. A <laughs> <laughs> dumb dish. I take him. Yeah, he takes, right. he takes out a little piece of uh, parchment there and a little ink quill, and he basically makes you up a little map, and he's like, here, go there. But again, be careful. Everything out there past the point of the city will try and kill you. Oh, yeah, because we were doing so well in the city. <laughs> mm. Who would build a zoo at such a location? Bad business model. Just bad. Location, location, <laughs> location. There's nothing near here. <laughs> uh, maybe he's trying to build it up, you know, maybe make it a big new attraction. I mean, if it's dangerous animals he wants, there's nothing but dangerous animals all around. It's more like a safari than a zoo, I feel like. <laughs> well, you can ask him all about it when you see him. How about that? <laughs> also, tell my Looks sons like he I just put up a giant fence around where the, these animals lived. <laughs> I'm kind of lazy about this. <laughs> and it took a lot of money. Five left, and it was like the most like apex predators of them all. <laughs> and it was worth betraying his own family for it, too. So, wow. Yeah. Now they get all aggressive because they can see their siblings on the other side of the fence there. Because uh, <laughs> I, I ain't moved none of them. <laughs> all right, so so you're burning daylight. I assume you start uh, taking off at this point. Zoo trip. All yep. right. The uh, the dude's map is very good. This guy clearly knows his way around, and instead of just you know bumblefucking your way out there, you're actually able to make some really good time and. Uh, Eventually, after uh, some walking, you start hearing uh, in the distance there uh, some big lumbering sounds. It's like some weird skittering that you've never quite heard before. I wonder what that is. Yeah, we should probably uh, do some... Oh, uh... shit. Uh, I didn't ask what I'm rolling for first. What is this, perception? Uh, yeah, or survival, too, if you want, because that's like you're out in nature, so that would be a survival check. In fact, uh, Corbin, you would get advantage because you're a mountain man animal tracker, so you are like 100% in your element right now. Oh, cool. Well, if it's survival, then that's a 22. Okay, hot damn then. Jeez. So, you know full well, Corbin, that that is the skittering sound of giant spider legs, is what those are. Ugh. I don't like this. Mm. I, I, I told you, I don't like the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good happens there. Ugh. Nope. All right. Get giant spiders, Blair witches. It's not good. <laughs> Damn Blair witches. B various types of Blaired witch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you head towards the sound? Do you uh, hunker down where you are and hope that the sound moves in another direction? What do you do? I have definitely learned from previous deep woods interactions to not make the first move and wait for the rest of my party to do that. 
There you go. I am going to run up a tree because I am a cat person, and I feel like I can ride this out there. All right. So uh, with your superior cat claws, Antoine, you were able to do just that. Uh, You climb a pine tree, and in doing so, you actually give yourself a great view in the distance. You see about four giant spiders but they're not alone though these giant spiders have riders on top of them and they too are decked out in these same green and silver robes that you know to be the uniform of the elven triad and they look to be uh they look to be going around in kind of what would you call it uh there's definitely a pattern uh to their movements they seem to kind of be uh what is it surveying the area making sure nothing comes in and or gets out uh, Something told me there were going to be spider riders. As soon as I, I heard there were only four of them, I was like, oh, there's going to be riders on top of this shit. <laughs> yeah. Always. I'm wondering, should we just hide and then try to follow these guys? I mean, they would probably I mean, that's totally lead us not, to... It's not our brand. I get that. <laughs> but... I mean, I'm down for jumping down here and punching a spider in the face if my boys that's are about it. it but I got pretty high... In- roll on that spider how much do i know about the spiders do i know like weaknesses or anything uh these the spiders native to this area of the forest would be the gray giant wolf spider which are uh deadly in packs uh but only really so much if you get stuck in their web they're kind of all about wearing you down poisoning you and then killing you that way uh they have riders though and traditionally you know spiders aren't tamed like this to be ridden by elves in this area they're really more of a dark elf under dark sort of thing so these guys are struggling really hard to kind of keep their spiders in order but obviously it's much easier to keep them down here because this is such thick brush they couldn't bring horses here they couldn't bring anything else so they kind of need the whole spider climb advantage what if we spook the spiders with a loud sound and get them to butt the riders you did good with the horses the last time Corbin did that trick. So, I mean, it's in your arsenal. I already seen one. Oh, yeah. Which one of us has the crossbow? I have a crossbow. Andron? Yeah, yes. you're up in the tree. Could you make that shot from here? I believe I could. It Because be... they can't see you. That would freak out the spider and just cause it to go nuts. I'll say it's a difficult shot, but, yeah, he could definitely make it with one of his fire arrows if he tried. Nice. All right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clint this. I'm just going to try to hawk out so... Would I have to roll a snipe, snipe shoot one of these spiders in one of its multiple eyes? That's a good ass question, actually. What will you have to roll for this? Um, man, let me actually look at your sheet here. I, they don't cover this in DM school, doing cool ass sniper shit from far away. Oh, can I can I make a spectral sniper rifle? Yeah, yeah, you could actually if you want to burn a spell slot. Absolutely. In fact, do that. Make a spectral crossbow, and I'll say you get advantage for that because it's bigger. Do we have to account for bullet drop in this world? (laughs) Yeah, really, what are the rules? Okay, I tell you what, Antoine, roll a regular attack from where you are with advantage because it's a big crossbow, and if you actually do end up hitting, I'll uh, tell you if what happens happens. All right, so I rolled a, let's see, that's a 15 on my d20. Hot dang. Then it's a d8. Uh, that's two. That's for damage. Is just to see if you hit. But uh, so that oh. was so that was a fifteen. Yes. Uh, all right. Here, let me check the armor class for spiders. Where is spiders on my sheet? Uh, so saith the spider. So saith the spider. Someone did not think we'd be dumb enough to fight them. You you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, their armor class is only thirteen. So yeah, a giant like Green Lantern arrow ends up landing uh, in the general area. You strike one in the back leg, and it starts freaking out like this was goddamn eight legged freak. And it's like. Meh! And it's like spraying spider poison everywhere. And because it starts freaking out, the other ones start freaking out. And here, let's actually see if uh, these elven uh, triad guys uh, manage to pass their animal handling check. Uh, That's an 11, so they don't. So the spiders buck them. And once they are off the spider's back, they begin to start uh, slowly webbing them up and eating them and pulling them up into the trees. Boom! Holy shit! (laughs) Boom! So that was a fucking genius plan. Let's Kill go. smarter, not harder. There you go. Uh, uh, one of the guys desperately uh, tries to start running away. He's hacking away at the web that they've got him in, and he falls out of one of the trees, and he starts just crawling uh, to your general direction, but the other guys are busy uh, just getting eaten. Nice. 
I'm glad well, this had a happy ending. Well, yeah, so we got a guide. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, somebody, somebody down on the ground, go procure that guy when he's a safe enough distance away from those spiders. I was, I up. was an idiot and did not move, so I guess I'm the one that's still on the ground. All right. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you very yeah. easily are able to make your way over to him in about, like, five minutes, crawling on his belly. You know, he's, what is he? He's, got, he's he clearly freaking poisoned. He's got, like, a, what is it, a bunch of, like, uh, sticks and twigs and everything hanging off him. He looks, he looks about as rough as Corbin's beard right now. And he eventually looks up and sees you, and he's like, ow, oh, fuck me. <laughs> fuck I yell down, hey, Vorlin, he's hideous. Try not to bang him. I don't get that reference, <laughs> says the guy on the ground. This day just gets worse for me. <laughs> okay, this is this is out of game for a moment. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be in game too. I think that's a worthy reaction. I was say, why isn't that in game? So this guy's, like, throwing up now. His eyes are bloodshot. This, like, spider poison is clearly just, like, burning in his freaking veins right now. <laughs> um, hey, so we need the directions and the way to the uh, habitat that's housing all the animals. Yeah. You tell me where you're going. Um, I will end you quickly. Yeah, he starts puking up blood, and uh, he looks over to Antoine, who is clearly a cleric. He's like, but, but he could heal me. He couldn't eat. <laughs> I could... I could go back to school and get my diploma, but I'm not going to do it. A lot of things could happen. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he crawls over to your, uh, what is it, like your robes there, Antoine, and he's clutching, and he's like, I don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to die of poison. Blah, blah. Barfing up blood and green bile and everything else. His skin is turning crazy colors now. Man, you're uh, wasting a lot of your life. Yeah, I'm going to look uh, at the rest of the party. I'm like, this could be a recruiting moment. Can I can I half heal him? Uh, you can use uh, you, you have healing word, and I'll say if you use if you burn a spell slot for healing word, you can uh, cure him enough to I talk. Kinda, yeah, I want to keep him alive just enough to give us information, but I don't I don't want to heal this guy. You uh, you also have potions too because I mean he's losing like health for like every minute that goes by. He's getting like burnt up, so you could also use a potion if you want it. Those are for us, though. <laughs> or, or, or you could do the really hard sell uh, if you wanted there. Uh, do an intimidation with advantage because he is dying. Or persuasion with advantage because he's dying. Uh, Corbin, you're, you're, you're muscle, so get, get some masters out of this guy. Be our Jack Bauer. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will be asking him about where the zoo is. Okay. I rolled, was my, what's my, what? I'm sorry. You said we were rolling for what now? Uh, uh, persuasion? Intimidation no, or intimidation. persuasion? Intimidation, that was it. Yeah, you, you would oh, okay. probably be better with that. Intimidation would be me. Uh, so I got 10, so that's not great. Okay, he, uh, he he's like burning up now. He's sweating. You try and threaten him, but like uh, he's having a hard time even hearing you right now. He's so fucked up. If, if the poison didn't do him, then falling out of the tree really hurt him. It would, that's going to do it. That'll usually do it. Yeah. God, is there anything we can do to get information out of this guy, or do you actually have to heal him? It's up to you. Again, someone else could try. Th you tried threatening. You still got persuasion in your back pocket, and yeah, uh, I got, healing. I got, uh, I got persuasion. I got a plus four to my charisma. Let's, you're let's you're very that. charming. Yeah, you can, you can tell from the people I date <laughs> to all the folks you loved before. <laughs> Yeah, that's not going to be much. That's only on 11. I, I want to tell you, but I also don't want to die. If they know I told you, they'll put me in the fucking hot rock. I will, I will heal you after you tell us. Roll a persuasion to see if he agrees with uh, your terms. All right. Mm, he does not. Fine, fuck it, I'll heal him. <laughs> All, right, you, All right, you burn a healing spell, the color starts to return to his skin, and uh, yeah, he's ultimately good to his war. It's like, all right, all right, it's over. It's over there on the eastern ridge. You can't miss it. Lots of cages around, it's still being put together. I cannot, I cannot believe this is what our boss is doing. <laughs> all right, you're going to for him. Mm. You're gonna show us. You're gonna show us where it is, or I'm gonna unheal you the old-fashioned way. 
I guess I don't have much choice right now, do I? Just don't. I just don't want to be eaten by spiders. Mm, you're telling me what you want. Uh, not show me where it is. Yeah, he eventually stands up. He dusts himself off, and he's like, oh, "All right, I'll show you, and then I'll have to run." Mm, we'll we'll th- we'll talk about that when we cross that bridge. All right, let's mm. just find the zoo. All right, all right. So uh, yeah, he he leads you into the forest, obviously making sure to make a wide breath of where his friends and allies were just eaten by spiders. You can hear some happy spider belches up in the tree. Blech. You know, they're they're happy. They're satisfied now. They've eaten. We, g- we giggle. falls from the sky. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We giggle while he tries to choke back tears. <laughs> that, that was almost me. Fuck, fuck. I hate this forest. I fucking hate it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you, you walk with him for about 15, 20 minutes, and eventually, you know, behind just some bushes, behind some thick oaks, you see, like, big piles of plywood and metal and just rows and rows of, uh, wrought iron cages. And actually, hey, you recognize these cages, because these are the cages that brought the gnolls to Highmore and that, uh, group of hyena monsters you fought all the way back in, like, episode one or two. Jesus Christ. That. Wow. That was my first time keeping watch at night. And I got real fucked up. I, I yeah, have been, it didn't go well. I have been <laughs> planting the seeds of this damn zoo arc for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and now I get to pick the fruit that I planted. So, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, in Corbin fact. Corbin uh, just pauses and turns and looks up at the sky and just goes, This? This was <laughs> what it was all leading towards? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Whatever, uh, Antoine, too, you, uh, you recognize the roof on this place because it is 100% the roof from your visions with, like, a bunch of palm leaves and stuff on top to try and, you know, hide it from uh, anyone who flew overhead in those uh, big moths that they use in the city. I tell the fellas that this is, this is the roof from my vision, the one that I saw. I mean, it adds nothing, but I feel like that's something I should share with the group instead of keeping it to myself like this is a movie. I mean, Antoine yeah. can see the future when he gets high. That's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Vorland's unimp- like, he's just trying to impress us. I don't No, him. no. I, I swear to you guys, I saw this in my vision. A voice told me the prophecy will be fulfilled. <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> and now here's Chumba Wumba. <laughs> they then mentioned something about winning. Tickets to <laughs> Super Tramp. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this uh, this looks to be like a big warehouse building without like a regular door, but kind of like a receiving, uh, exporting door there, like one of the big ones that you got to lift up made of metal. Uh, like a loading dock so couldn't even door. put the zoo outside? This guy's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress, man. Is this just for his own personal amusement, or is this actually supposed to be open to the public at the, some point? The elf guy. The last thing we saw. I just hope it's not a sex thing. <laughs> the uh, the elf guy sighs at this point. <sighs> We've all been asking the same questions amongst ourselves. Honestly, Why we're not are sure. Are you working for him? There this... have to be better opportunities for you. When you're an oh, elf in tree, Joe, Joe Exotic. <laughs> when you're an elf in treetop, you got few other options here, man. Oh, I'm going to summon a big spectral Carol Baskins to kill him. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Hey, cutie, kitty. <laughs> She's going to be uh, on. I remember when we all thought that horrible, horrible man was charming for five seconds for yeah. no goddamn reason at all. What a weird time four Living months this ago. this close to Oklahoma, I still do. I mean, that's <laughs> just as good as you're going to get out of Oklahoma. I'm sorry. It don't get much better. <laughs> The, the He's animal. still a Kennedy. The, uh, the the guy whose name you haven't asked yet, the L. He's like, his office is inside. Got a bunch of the animals in there. Watch out for that. In his office? I mean, there's it's like a warehouse. He's got an office upstairs. Okay. Cool, yeah, because cool. we're looking for the thing that's got the spell on it. Pomegranate. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I thought we were supposed to just tear down the zoo. I mean, you can do <laughs> that, Sorry, too. Got, I'm not stopping you I got you tunnel vision that. for a second, everybody. <laughs> Does any of us have, like, a cloak of invisibility where we can go through and unlock cages and just cause a big ruckus in the warehouse? Well, it's funny that you should say that, Antoine, because as you do, your pack starts vibrating, and uh, you hear a muffled that's a, voice. That's a different thing. I swear to God, if that, <laughs> if that Hanna-Barbera motherfucker pops out of there... <laughs> Hey, 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 guys. Did I hear about some infiltration? Hey, hey. 